بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اسال الله كريم رب العرش العظيم ان يتولاك في الدنيا والاخره وان يجعلك مباركا اينما كنت وان يجعلك ممن اذا اعطي شكر واذا ابتلى صبر واذا اذنب استغفر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ايها الاحباب may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and forgive us all and grant us success in this life as well as the hereafter I wanted us to begin and this is the first lesson in a book I just finished translating with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's entitled The Encouragement to Follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by our Shaykh, Shaykh Ibrahim al-Rahayli, hafadhullah ta'ala. And before beginning, just to give a very brief idea about who the Shaykh is so that way you know who you have uh, something about the person you are taking knowledge from that we are translating from the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala is one of our mashayikh that is known for the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is a professor at the Islamic University in Medina Jama Islamiyah uh, meaning he is a PhD holder in Aqidah and I believe his master's or his undergraduate work was in Fiqh or something to this uh, effect and the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala is more and more Min Fadli Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is teaching in the Haram more often during the Hajj season uh, during Ramadan sometimes and is very busy with spreading knowledge. And he is a student of amongst many mashayikh like Sheikh Abdul Masin al Abad and also his supervisor for his PhD thesis, I believe it was, or it was his master's, was Sheikh Alama Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of our great Ethiopian mashayikh that passed on approximately about 10 to 15 years ago. Rahimahullah Ta'ala and may Allah have mercy upon all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And moving on, the Shaykh entitled this, this is a Kalima al Mutaba' li Sunnah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa hars alayha. So the entitle, he entitled this, and this is from his, this was a talk that he gave, and it's entitled encouragement to follow the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and before we get into it i also want to mention the way that we will look at this treaties we will mainly rely on my translation and i will make some comments a, a very little commentary of things that i feel that may be beneficial or things that may uh, need clarification from the translation or uh, otherwise. So this booklet was written by our Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Amr al-Rahayli hafadhullah ta'ala who has been an inspiration to me since the time I lived in the city of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Medina. The Sheikh's lec lectures and lessons that I was able to attend were and continue to be a source of inspiration uh, to me and many others and have assisted us with the tools and knowledge and understanding of how to deal with many of the trials that have befallen Ahl Sunnah in contemporary times. The balance and insight of the Sheikh and his desire to pursue and exhibit the truth wherever it may be found and his persistent call to the sunnah have also been a source of strength and offer many lessons for the student of knowledge to benefit from. 
I ask Allah the Almighty to protect and preserve the Shaykh, forgive him of his shortcomings, and bless the Muslims everywhere with sincerity to Allah and firmness upon the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And may Allah rectify the affairs of the Muslims everywhere, and especially those who are being harmed for their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like our brothers and sisters in Damaj, Yemen, who are being attacked by the Shia uh, and Ahl Zandaka. The Shaykh began his treaties, half of Allah Ta'ala. He said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. This is a short lecture during the blessed month of Ramadan, 1433 Hijri. And we ask that Allah the Almighty makes it beneficial for whoever hears it. And the topic is the encouragement to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the evidence from the Qur'an and the Sunnah show the obligation of following the Prophet Wasallam and his Sunnah and the encouragement to do so. Also, warning against religious innovations and desires in preference to the religious text. So, when the Shaykh mentioned desires, al-ahwa is how we usually translate it as desires, meaning it can sometimes have the reference meaning bid'ah or religious innovation or heresy. And sometimes it refers to the desires meaning uh, someone's, uh, the negative lowly desires, meaning a person who follows their, uh, their shahwa. You know, their negative, lowly desires, committing zina, adultery, etc., and fornication. But generally, what's meant here, al-ahwa, is those who follow their own opinion, and they base their religion based on their opinion or the opinions of imams in contradiction to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the minhaj or methodology of the salaf of this ummah. Then the Shaykh began to bring evidence. He said, Allah the Almighty says, O you who believe, follow Allah and His Messenger, and do not turn away from Him while you are hearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al karim Ya yu al-ladhina amanu wa'atiyullaha wa rasul Wa la tawallu anhu wa antum tasma'un O you believe, follow Allah and His Messenger, and do not turn away from Him while you are listening or hearing. وَيَقُولْ اتَّبَعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ قَلِيلٍ مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم also, follow what has been sent down to you from your Lord and follow not any helpers Besides him, little do you remember. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Fi kitabi kareem, Wa anna hadha sarati mustaqeemin fa'atabiyu wa la ta'atabiyu subul. Fattafarraqa bikum an sabilihi thalikum wa saakum bihi la'allakum tattakoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi kareem, Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is off forgiving, most merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and uh, or this is the uh, translation of the last verse we mentioned. Uh, I missed a verse where the Shaykh mentioned the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاعْتَبِعُونِ يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غُفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is off forgiving, most merciful. And in that verse it shows us, أَيُّ الْأَحْبَابِ 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet وسلم, to tell the people, say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. So that shows us the obligation to follow the Sunnah. And all these verses that the Shaykh is mentioning from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Kalam of Allah, are illustrating the importance of following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that was the point of the, the main uh, aspect of the Shaykh's talk, following the Sunnah, the encouragement of following the Sunnah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Quran encourages us and orders us to follow the Sunnah. And anytime we hear an obligation, we know an obligation from the Quran and the Sunnah shows us it's an obligation to do so. Meaning anytime there's a command in the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, then the asl or the foundation of that commandment is that it is an obligation. And so the ulama of fiqh, they say, Al-Amr Yufid al-Wujud. Uh, Yufid al-Wujub. That a command, it illustrates the obligation of something. So whenever we hear uh, a command in the Quran or a command in the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam to do something, then that is dalil, that is evidence that that obligation or that duty is an obligation, that it is wajib, that we must perform it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, in an, uh, that Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَسْمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرُّكُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Here in that uh, verse, we have a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاَتَسْمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Adhere to the rope of Allah, showing that it's an obligation to hold to the rope of Allah. And then there's a prohibition in that command as well. And anytime we hear a nahi, you feed the tahrim, that whenever we have a, um, a, 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 a prohibition from the Quran or the Sunnah, then that is dalil or evidence that that is uh, something haram meaning that it's prohibited to do that action. If Allah prohibits something, that means it's haram to do it. And if the Messenger of وسلم, prohibited, it means it's haram to do it, do so. So those are the origins of a command and a nahi and a prohibition, is that they, al-amr uh, yufidu wujub, that a command in the Quran and the Sunnah shows that it's an obligation unless, and then here's the exception, unless there's evidence to come from the Quran or the Sunnah to show that it is not an obligation, but that it is recommended or that it moves to one of the other ahkam in the Sharia, from the khamsa ahkam, from the five different rulings, from being a wajib, an obligation, or mustahab, something that is recommended, or... Uh, uh, makru that is disliked or haram that is prohibited or mubah and just to briefly go over that and we'll end on this because we'll break this up so that these can be short lessons that hopefully can be of benefit is we'll just explain this and this is outside of the scope of the treaties of what the sheikh was talking about but just since we opened this door up let's complete it that when we talk about these five uh, ahkam of the sharia uh, al-wajib when we say something is an obligation, that means that when you, uh, that means you must fulfill that action or command and you will re be rewarded for doing so. And the failure to complete that command means you have uh, uh, incurred a sin, that you will get a sin. That's if something's wajib. If something is mustahab, it's recommended, like when we say the sunnah prayers or something is recommended, is mustahab. It's, it's recommended or it's liked or preferred or what have you. This means that that action, if you do it, you'll receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll receive ajr. But if you don't do it, then you will not receive any uh, sin. And that's what different, differentiates differentiates uh, an obligation or wajib from mustahab. And then when we move to makru or mubah, mubah means that something is permissible, but that it is, uh, but you don't receive reward for it, nor do you receive a sin for leaving it. There's no, uh, you know, reward tied to it. So, for example, as the ulama, they sometimes give the example of an apple, eating an apple. 
It's mubah. It's permissible. But it, you get no adjur for eating an apple, nor do you get a sin for eating an apple, nor do you get a sin for leaving an, even, leaving off eating an apple. And this is not a dars and a sula fiqh, so we won't go into any more details with regards to that. Then we move to uh, makru when something is disliked. Disliked meaning that that um, action or command or what have you, if you do so, then you do not receive a sin, nor do you receive uh, a reward. But if you leave it, if you leave something that is makru, something that is disliked, then you'll receive ajr for leaving off that. And then finally, we have what is haram, uh, you know, what's prohibited, and meaning those things which if you do it, you will get a sin. If you leave it off, uh, leave off the haram, you will receive ajr, you will receive reward for it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless this to be of, a, of benefit to us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam until our next uh, dars.